face. Oh, man. All right. I'm just pulling up a couple things. How are other folks? Alive. This is excellent. All right. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to start, but Rhea and Diana are going to be presenting with me today and between the three of us, hopefully we'll be able to answer your questions um, for what this looks like. So thank you for being with us this morning. We're going to kind of talk through the process of what it looks like to create your dossier for either renewal, promotion, or tenure. Um, and then what the process looks like for actually submitting that dossier um, into the new system. And the, the good news is 95% of this process is just like it's always been. More um, well, like 98. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just say the news is, I don't know if, like, if you, I don't know what your feelings are about the current process. So it's just the news. Maybe it's not good news, but uh, mo most things are exactly the same as they have been. It's just at the very end, um your experience with how you submit your dossier will be different than what it was a year ago so we're going to go through the whole process from i'm getting started right now to um submitting your dossier and then um what you can kind of see um, as that goes through the process that's kind of the here this time so thank you for being here for this session um and we will uh kind of talk through things as we go so um, Rhea or Diana, you want to add anything before we jump in? Um, folks should feel welcome to just raise their hand or chime in or post things in the chat. Diana and I are watching the chat, so yeah. Any way you want to communicate, go for it. Okay, perfect. Okay, so um, a nice website um, that kind of gets an outline of everything and I just put that uh, link into the chat. Um, this is the website where where the college maintains all of the templates and overall steps for what needs to happen. Um, if you just search SUNY Oneonta renewal tenure promotion any of those words it will bring you to this link as well but this is where the best place to start. Um, the, and I'm going to share my screen right now, so as we talk through this, you can kind of see. But um, let's see the um, at the top of the screen, um, there is a documents for deans review, and when you click on that, it actually takes you down to the bottom of this, where there's the requirements, and under requirements are the templates and these are the best place to start is one of these two templates depending on what you're going up for if you're going up for term contract renewal then you would click on that template if you're going up for promotion and tenure you would click on that template okay when you click on that it will um, open up a pdf that has two things in it that are really important one is on the on the page gives you lots of information about how to work with adobe pdfs and you are going to be the dossier that you're creating is going to be a PDF. So that's the important part of this. You are creating a PDF that's going to be your dossier, your packet that you're going to be turning in. So on the page are all the information about how to work with this PDF to be able to add documents into here. And I'm actually going to go through that process right now as well so you can see it. So that's that's one thing that's important from this document. The second thing that's important is the list of bookmarks that are on here. Um, the bookmarks I, at the left hand side, I can click on the bookmarks right over here to see them. Or what I prefer to do right now, um, right now I am online looking at this. I prefer to click on open in Acrobat. And by opening in Acrobat, um, it gives me the full Acrobat suite. Now, before I go any further, in order to do this, the, the main thing, the, the tool that you will need to have on your computer is Adobe Acrobat DC. And I'm going to put that, I'm going to put the title of this into the chat because um, Pro DC. 
This is the um, program you need on your computer to do everything. You have access to this for free through the college. So if you don't have it, all you need to do is put in a ticket to um, the service desk do through this email address and ask to have Adobe Acrobat Pro DC installed on your computer. Okay. What Adobe Acrobat Pro DC does is allow you to create um, PDFs where you can pull in lots of different documents into one place. So that's why it's really important to have that because it makes it really easy to take all of these different things that are going to be in the bookmarks in a second and just pull them into your uh, final dossier. Okay. And let's see, I see a hand raised, and so I was going to yeah. see, uh, yeah, Mina, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mina. Uh, Chilton, I have a few questions. I mean, um, like, uh, we are talking about the cloud one, right? So, I mean, I already have access to Adobe through cloud. Yes. Um, let me think about that. So with Adobe Cloud, yes, you have access to this and can download it if you have access to that. That's correct. Okay, but I mean, are you talking about something else? Because I found that it's not really user friendly. So the one I'm talking about, yeah, the the cloud is is a is a web based version. This is something that's actually on your computer. It's loaded on your computer. So through Adobe Cloud, you should be able to download this onto your computer and use it. Okay, all right, thank you. So, and again, if you have any issues with that, you can always email help me at oniana.edu. And they can help you with the downloading process. They can help you figure out how to get this program onto your computer. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and and I found that once you once you get used to this program, it's actually it, it works really well for what we need to do. Okay. All right. So um, we had so just to step back really quickly, we had gone to the promotion tenure website. We had gone down to the uh, requirements area and found the correct template for what you need to do. Um, and I think Rhea had shared some information about adjunct uh, uh, for adjuncts as well. Um, once you have the correct template, you can either um, save it on your computer or you can um, uh, open it up in Adobe Acrobat Pro right away. And now I am in Adobe Acrobat Pro and we said there are two main areas here that are really important. One is this content in the middle of the page is how to use this Adobe Acrobat space. But the other important part of this is the bookmarks, um, which go along with this. The bookmarks are at the left hand side. They're under this little bookmark um, icon. And they actually are the list of what is expected to be a part of your dossier. Okay. So um, by default, there are seven main areas here. Some of them have little carrots, little arrows next to them to say, hey, this there's more information underneath this. So for department recommendation, if you click on the arrow, it will say, oh, ultimately there'll be an associate dean's letter that will be a part of this. There'll be a chair's letter. There'll be a departmental committee letter as well. Um, under teaching, if I expand that out, that what under teaching, what they're looking for is that you have a self-evaluation that's your um, narrative about your teaching. And then you also include peer reviews, student perception of instructions, um, student free responses, and grade distribution data. And that wording needs to be updated from student perceptions of instruction since we now have the new course evaluations that we are using instead. But um, it's that same idea. All right. So this menu is really your checklist of what needs to be inside of here. Okay. I, I have taken that menu and I have made it into a Word document because I have found that it's really nice to have a Word document I can either have on my computer and mark things off as I have them ready, or I can print out and I can put a check mark, a mark next to it whenever I have it ready. So I'm gonna put those in here right now for both of these um, so that you can have them as a Word document as well if you would like because that just, I feel like, makes it easier. So, um, there we go. Those are getting uploaded right now, so they'll show up in the chat in just a second. All right, so, um, 
So if uh, so, these are Word documents that are a checklist of everything that you need to have as a part of this. Okay. When so, what I'd like I to add something. Work yeah. in Word when you're creating your drafts and things. Work in Word, and when it's finished and spell checked, and it's what you want, then you're going to put it in Acrobat. Don't create your document like drafts in Acrobat. Create it in Word put things in it when that section is done. Yes, thank you. Um, and Carmela, um, I don't have the list for adjuncts right now, but I'll check with Rhea and that's something we can send out afterwards is what would be that checklist as a Word document as well. Because I have found having a Word document really helps here instead of having it in the PDF because uh, it's just not visually as easy to ex access when it's in the PDF. Um, I'm going to I'm going to um, double on what Rhea just said. Do all of your work in Word. Do not put anything into the PDF until it is until you are feel like it's ready to go. Um, it's a lot easier to edit in Word. It's a lot easier to navigate in Word. Um, once you get into PDF, really the PDF is like putting it into the final folder. If anybody remember, <laughs> if anybody remembers when we used to do paper versions of this, like it's the same thing as putting it into the actual three ring binder. That, that, I think of that as the same thing as putting it into the PDF. When it's ready to go, that's when you're making the final copy of it that goes in the PDF. Don't do any editing in Word in, unless you absolutely have to, because um, it just it'll make it a lot easier on you. Okay. What I recommend doing is creating a folder in OneDrive. And the reason I say put it in OneDrive is because then you don't have to worry about carrying a uh, thumb drive with you everywhere and losing that thumb drive that has all of your dossier work on it. You will probably be working on this uh, from multiple computers. If you do a folder in OneDrive that's for this only, then you can access it from any computer. You can get to it from anywhere you need to. So that's my recommendation. Um, just because I feel like that's I've seen enough people that have had these on thumb drives or external hard drives or even like saved on their computer and the computer crashes and, and you lose a lot of work because it's not saved elsewhere. So everybody has access to OneDrive. If you need um, information on that one, then let me know. But that's how I would recommend doing this. OK. Uh, and uh, Mina, is that? I believe yes. You again. Yeah. Another question. Sorry. Uh, so I mean, like when. Uh, our Word documents, everything is uh, ready to go. Like, how long uh, typically does it take to just pull everything as a PDF? Uh, uh, if you have everything really well organized, it takes about half an hour to an hour to get everything pulled in. I'm going to show you what it looks like right now because it's pretty awesome what it'll do to pull it into here. Um, depending on the length of, like, if you have a whole bunch of articles you have to pull in, it has to convert each one of those from Word into PDF. Um, but so it takes it, it's not a, it's not a long is the point. Um, it's pretty straightforward if you have all of your documents kind of organized before you go to pull them in. OK, thank you. Yeah, that, that's yeah. Thing that I was kind of stressing myself. myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm actually going to show you exactly what that looks like in just a second because it's awesome. It's it's pretty impressive what it does, actually. OK. All right. So as far as the content of what goes into this, I cannot talk on that. And Rhea might, might be able to talk a little bit about it, but what I would recommend that you do is you talk with your department uh, to see what they want you to have as a part of your dossier. So the first step, once you have this, is go to your department and say, okay, what should be included in my um, self-evaluation for teaching? What should be included in my um, summary statement for any research and scholarship I've done? What should be included in my candidate's request? Your department is going to be the driver of that content and that information. So we can't help you with what what content should go into here. We in the TLTC can help you with the how to pull it all together if you need help with that. OK, so um, once you have this, um, if you haven't already talked to somebody in your department, I would reach out to your department and say, who should I be talking with? Who would be a good mentor for me through this process? Um, because they'll be the ones that can help you say what content should be in here. Um, we really think that it should be uh, visually done this way or whatever. They'll give you some feedback inside your department. And Rhea, is there anything you want to add on that? Yeah, some departments have a process of um, a review previous to it being submitted to the dean that gives the chance for the faculty to um, update their packet from recommendations after that presentation to the department. Uh, so you'll want to know because that 
deadline will be before it heads to the dean. So there's a department deadline and sometimes there's a deadline previous to that. Please really communicate with your chair. Departments have different procedures. And if things aren't con are confusing, talk to me and I'll, I'll help you figure them out if I can. So um, you're not only relying on your department, you've got the faculty center to work things out with too, just in terms of figuring it out because departments are different. Thanks. Um, I would recommend if you notice on the Word documents that I had sent out to everybody and over here, it actually it kind of makes this as an outline. So there's a big uh, a Roman numeral one and then underneath that there's a, a uppercase A and uppercase B and uppercase C. When you are creating files, I would recommend using a similar structure um, because and I'm going to pull this over. I, I was going right through last night and just creating a whole bunch of pages and what I normally see is stuff like this. You'll have like 20 documents in a folder that are all Word documents or some PDFs. If you have um, like journal articles you've written and they come to you as a PDF, you can have PDFs in here. That is fine. Usually those you're not going to edit. They're just the journal articles, so you just want to be able to throw that in. Or if you have a scanned letter of support from a, from a, somebody else, that might be coming as a PDF. That is completely fine. Again, you're not going to edit those PDFs, so they're good to go here. Anything that you need to edit, keep in Word until you're going to put it into your dossier. OK, but what I usually see is this where it's just a, a big mix of stuff and you have to remember, oh, this is this. So what I recommend is doing is saying, OK, my um, request letter is the very first thing that I need to put into here. I am going to um, right click on it or if you're on a Mac, control click on it so that you can rename it. Or if you know a shortcut for renaming, there's some shortcuts for renaming. And I would put a, like a, the, either the number one or the Roman numeral one with an A after it or something. So then all of these come in in the actual order they go into your dossier. And it just will help you as you get 20 or 30 things in here to be able to remember which one is which. OK. So I would have all of my. Um, all of my documents in one folder. I just it, when I worked with people, that's what works the best is they have everything in one folder. Here's everything off of that checklist in one thing. Oh yeah, Ed, very good. Um, if you're going to do it by numbers, do zero one instead of just one because it um, will help you in the long run. When you get past ten, sometimes when you go to one zero one one. It it orders it weird. So if you do zero one zero two, yeah, then it keeps double digits in order as well. So thanks, Ed. All right. Once you feel once you have things that are ready to go in your dot into your dossier and it might be that you want to go ahead and start it, but you don't have everything finished yet. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Ed's talking about if you get to triple digits with the amount of uh, documents you need to add in. Just if you're getting over to over 100 documents, you might you might be uh, getting into a lot of different documents for this. I've never seen anybody that's had over. I've never seen anybody that's gone to triple digits for their documents. I'll just say it that way. Um, all right, once you have all of your documents ready or if, once you have some documents that are ready, you want to go ahead and start pulling them together. And Mina, this goes back to what you were talking about of if you if you have your personal statement done and you know you have your CV done and you know you have your FARs ready, you can go ahead and pull those into the to the PDF. OK. When when you have something that's ready, and you're like, yes, I want to get this into my document. I am ready to go. That's when you're going to come back to this template and you're going to have it open in Adobe Acrobat Pro. And when you do that at the right hand side of the page, there's a whole bunch of options, one of which is organized pages. This organized pages area is really great at helping you add documents into here from all sorts of places. It shows you all of your documents as little thumbnails. Um, and you can choose the size of those thumbnails at the bottom right hand corner. I can drag to make them larger if I really want to see what's on the page. So I'm down at the bottom right hand corner or I can make them smaller if I want to be able to see a lot of pages at once. I usually find I like to have it about here because then it gives me some view of it without having to know exactly what's on the page. And now I can start adding things in. I can go up to insert at the top of the page and from file. And when I do that, it will say what do you want to insert? And so I've got a folder that I put on my desktop for right now just to be able to do this. But if I was correct, I'd have it in my OneDrive folder um, that I would be able to do. And then I would say, OK, I want to pull in my CV. 
So I have this on select file to insert. If you notice, this is still a Word document right now. I'm going to either click on it and click open at the bottom, or I can double click either one. And what's what I find so cool about this, it, well, so it says, where do you want to put this in? And at the top, it'll say, do you want to put it after that page or before that page? And I'm going to say after the last page. But I could say I want to have it after page one. Or as you get into this, I want it after page 50. You can really say exactly where you want to put this inside of this document. So I can say I want to put this in after the last page, and I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> and then what it's going to do is the process of opening that Word document, converting it into a PDF, and then putting it right into the here. Now, I'm sharing my screen. My computer's doing a lot of stuff with Teams. This is going to go slower than it will for you when you're on your own. Um, it usually goes pretty quick, but because I, my processor is working really hard right now doing a Teams meeting while I'm doing this, it takes a little bit longer. <clears throat> So um, there it is. Now, my current CV was one page long. It just says current CV on it. Your CV will probably be a little bit longer than that. But I just want to be able to see what that place marker looks like for that. OK. Um, if I have everything ready, then I would recommend just putting them in the order that you have. So I would go back to my checklist. I would say, oh, I need my personal statement. Um, I'm going to go back up to insert. I'm going to say from file again. And I'm going to go to my personal statement. Um, my, here's my candidate request letter, which is that very first thing that we thought we needed. So I'm going to go to that one. I'm going to click open again. It's going to ask me where I want to put this. I want to put it before page three. I want to put it earlier than that. So I'm going to say I want to have it um, before page three. So now it's going to go right here between page two and page three. I'm going to click OK. It's going to do that same process again. It's going to say, I want to take that. I want to put it into here. And um, it will do that whole conversion process from a Word document to a PDF and then drop it right here. OK. So that's how we can add all of our files into here. And you can go through one at a time. Um, if it, oh, let's see, I accidentally had this saved wrong. So both of them say current CV, but that's supposed to say personal statement on it. And I apologize. If you realize you had the wrong document, I can hover over pages and just click the delete button. Um, if there's multiple pages that I realize I did wrong, I can um, click and drag to take as many pages as I want to to get rid of it once. So if you realize you put in the wrong document, it was four pages long, you can click and drag to get those pages um, and click delete, or you can just click delete on one page at a time to get rid of those pages. And then you would just go back up to insert and add the new file back in. Okay. Also, if I realize I put it in the wrong place, I accidentally meant to have this page right here at the end. I can click and drag it and actually move it to wherever I want to inside of here. So with this um, if, um, organized pages, I can insert pages, I can delete them, I can move them to get them in the right order for where I want to put them. So I'm going to pause there for a second to see if there's any questions on the process of bringing documents in uh, before moving on. OK. The one thing I will say is if you if you bring a document in, you bring your personal statement in, you get some feedback on it, they're like, I would really like you to do some major changes to it. I would recommend going back to the Word document, making the changes, and then coming into your dossier deleting out the the personal statement from before and putting the new one in um, that's a lot easier than trying to edit the document uh, when it's when it's in a pdf form so if you have to make changes to it just delete out that whole personal statement if it's four pages long two pages long whatever delete those two or three pages out put the new one in because then all your pages get repaginated correctly if you have to put in a new paragraph or it becomes from two pages to three pages whatever it just makes it easy to be able to do that yeah, and, Car and that's what, again, Carmelo, that's what I recommend is that you have one OneDrive folder that you use. You put all of your final versions in there, and that way when you're pulling from it, um, then it becomes one final document. The one other thing I recommend is that you change the, the title of this from template TCR, if you're using this template, to Reynolds uh, Renewal Packet 2021 right away that way you know that it's that's the that's what you want to be working from 
So that's my packet that I'm going to keep going back to and keep adding to or taking out of as I need to. Reynolds dossier, whatever word you use or your department wants you to use um, to be able to do that. But um, I would recommend going up to file, save as. file and save as and then rename this as your dossier for this year so that it's really clear what that is. And again, um, Car uh, Carmel asked the questions. These would start as uh, Word documents in your OneDrive. Your drafts should be in OneDrive too. I always number my drafts because I dump things into a draft and then rework it a bunch of times. That's how I work. But I, I number or date the drafts and I have them all there, too, because sometimes I go back to them and then I put final and then that's the one that gets placed into this larger document. But I keep everything on OneDrive. Computers do weird things right when you need them to not do that. They get stressed out, too, I think. <laughs> okay. Okay. <clears throat> So that first part of, uh, so the first step was to grab the um, template and get your checklist so you can get started. Second was to check with your department. Third one was to start to collect all your files together into one folder and anything that you have to edit or you have to write on, keep it as a Word document. If you're pulling in, remember it, letters of support might come as PDFs. If you have journal articles or publications or anything, that'll come in as PDFs, that's okay, but have everything in one folder that's gonna go into your actual dossier. I really recommend not putting them into the dossier until the very end so they're all there together. As you can see, you can do it piecemeal, but it, it's, you have to really make sure each thing is in there. Um, so it's really nice to just do it at the end where you say, put this in first, this second, this third, this fourth, this fifth, this sixth, and you can kind of go through. All right, so that we're up to that step. Now the next step is um, your dossier gets really long really quickly. Surprise, like these can be, um lots of pages long and it's it's the easiest way to navigate through this is by using the bookmarks that we had created so um actually um so i'm going to close so i'm going to save this first um and i would recommend as you are putting them all of these things together in your dossier save them regularly um, because if you have a publication that's 30 pages long that's getting pulled in from a word document um you don't want it to choke in the middle of that and lose any work that you had before that. So be especially before you pull in a really large document, I would recommend saving it just so that step um, is where you are. OK. So I'm just going to hit I'm actually going to hit save as right now so I can say save this as a Reynolds dossier. I'm putting it into my. 2021. There we go. OK. So now I'm going to, when I hit the close bar over here at the right hand side, it's taking me out of this organized pages tool and back into what we're used to seeing. Across, and I'm actually going to collapse this for a second. A lot of times when you first come in, you have an, this little arrow at the left hand side of the page. Um, if you click on that, it will show you all of your different icons. The first one is, is kind of the, are the little thumbnails of each of your pages. So if I want to quickly go to a page, I can. The second one are all of your bookmarks. And again, this is where this template is nice because it has all of the bookmarks already preloaded into here. So the next step is we want to set so that when somebody clicks on candidates request, it goes to that candidates request. Right now when I click on this, it doesn't go anywhere. It just it closes that out. I want to actually set what it's called the destination. So I want to set the destination of where to go when you have this bookmark. So um, I'm going in order to do that, I find it's best to use the arrows to move around to where I want it to be. Um, I want my bookmark to be um, actually. I'm going to I'm actually going to edit my document really quickly because I didn't realize I did this and I want this to say my personal statement instead. So to do this, there is a tool at the right hand side. I use it for very my if you realize a word is, is misspelled. Um, then you can use the edit PDF to actually edit the words on the page. Again, if you're doing major edit edits, I would recommend going back to the original document. Um, but if you're just changing the spelling of a word or just a, a phrasing, real, a, something small, you could do it here. OK. All right, now I have my personal statement page. Um, I want to set it so that when I click on candidates request, it's going to go to my personal statement. So to do that, I am going to right click on these words. 
Um, and again, if you're on a Mac, it would be control click. And then I would go to set destination. And when I click on set destination, it will say, are you sure that you want to set the donation of the selected bookmark to the current location? And I want to say, yes, I do. So I'm going to click yes. And then personally, I like to test it to make sure it's going where I want it to. So I move to a different page and then I click on it again. And it should take me back to that space. Okay. Now I'm like, great, that bookmark is ready to go. Now I can go to my next bookmark. My next bookmark is my current CV. So now I'm going to go down to my current CV page and I'm going to go to my bookmark for current CV and I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say set destination again. It's going to ask me again, are you sure you want to do this? And I can say yes. Now, once you have multiple bookmarks, I'm going to click on the bookmark above it to go to my candidate request. And then I'm going to click on current CV and it should take me to my current CV. And I'm like, great, that one's ready to go. Okay. All right. Um, Maddie, yeah, go ahead. Uh, hold on, you're muted, Maddie. So I, you're I muted. just fixed it. I'm not used to Teams. I don't yeah, use yeah. Teams. Um, so this part is you're you're just organizing it within the pages through the bookmarks in the same way right here in your document, right? You're not set, setting the destination to somewhere else besides in this multiple page PDF. Correct. That's correct. So, OK, so what's different about making going through the trouble of making each bookmark if you can just organize the pages visually? So if you have 60 pages in your your packet okay. and um, one of the reviewers wants to quickly get to your letters of support, they can scroll through those 60 pages to look for that letter of support or it's much easier for them if they can click on letter of support and it jumps right to the letters of support. Okay. Right? So that's yeah. where the bookmarks are nice is because then when reviewers are going through, if they want to get to your personal statement quickly, they can click on personal statement and get it to there. Okay. Yeah. Does that, we have does to that remember that when you're going up for promotion, these start at 200 pages and go to 500. So those bookmarks are key for the people who have to sit down and read 10 of these that are 500 pages in a semester in the committee. So bookmarks uh, are key for the, the uh, end user. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That answers that. Thank you. Okay. And Shaheen had a question I want to talk about first, and then Mina, I, I saw you, you have your hand raised as well. So what we recommend is let's say you have your CV is eight pages long. Go to the first page of your CV and set the destination to go to the first page because then they can say, OK, now I can scroll from here to look through your full CV. So the bookmark isn't going to multiple pages. You have it go to the first page of a multi page thing. So your personal statement might be three pages long. Have it go to the have the destination should be the first page of your uh, personal statement. And then the reviewer can scroll down from there to read the full personal statement. So Shaheen, does that does that answer your question? OK, good. Thanks. And Mina, yeah, go ahead. Um, Tilton, do we need to have a uh, table of contents? Because uh, I see that um, like for the last couple of uh, tenure and promotion meetings, our colleagues in our department did it. But does it necessary? Is it necessary or was it just like they, they prefer to do that? Thank you. I would I would say go back to your department and ask that question. Sometimes they like to see it. Sometimes they don't. The bookmarks is a is a form of table of contents. The bookmarks is a really nice way to be able to show everything that's in there. But I would I would go back to your department to ask that question instead, um, just because I, that's going to be a departmental question. OK, all right, thank you. Yeah, and I do want to uh, go ahead. I do want to add that um, last this last academic year, departments were asked to uh, as part of the renewal tenure and promotion um, updating process that we did on our campus. Um, departments were asked to review their own process. Those uh, were sent to the provost. Those are being reviewed and that information will come back to the department. So what they have done in the past might be exactly what they continue to do, but do again, check with your chair because the, the feedback might have been saying to the department, We'd like to have more of these similar, so would you please do X? Okay, so that's 
you're we're kind of in a transition period trying to standardize and clarify these procedures so again continuing to ask questions is valuable thank you ria and maddie is your hand still do you have another question or is your hand still raised from before okay that's fine i just want to make sure and shaheen same for you did you have a question another question yeah yeah um so my uh, question was about page numbers that are there in the files that you pull in. So for example, if I'm pulling in my student evaluations, they have those page numbers. It's irrelevant if they're there, right? It doesn't matter. Or do we have to sort of, because it's a PDF that I have already. Um, and the other question I had was, is there a way for us to edit? Yes. Yes, that's the next. That's where I'm going next, Shaheen. So thank you very much. Um, as far as the page numbers, again, I I would check with your department on that. The 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 bookmarks in the PDF are really key because that's what helps them get around. It used to be that matter when we had a binder and that you needed to have a table of contents that said go to page number 73 to start this. Because we have bookmarks now, you can say click here to go to that thing. It doesn't have to be page numbers. So. From a technology standpoint, uh, the page numbers don't matter as much. But again, I'm going to echo what Rhea said of check with your department on that because there might be some way that they're talking about standardizing that. OK, it's more just because I've used obviously PDF in this way to create teaching portfolios and page numbers have always been the bane of my existence because <laughs> you're, you're pulling in word files which have some page numbers. And then when you create the PDF, the page numbers are really tricky to edit because I've yes. done the footer. And that takes, that removes any header that pages have. Um, yes. Um, yep. Uh, yes. I I hear exactly what you're saying. I've I've ran into this. I've run into this many times, um, and it is it is a pain. So that's that's where I'm like from a technology standpoint. I the bookmarks I think are what really matter. But again, I would get clarification on that one because that's a, a, um, I don't want to say definitively yes or no on that one. No, I'm but I think to... it's a technology issue that, you know, how do we neatly get the entire PDF to have a sort of consistent page number? You see yeah. what I'm saying? That oh, yeah. So we'll get we'll get we'll try and get some clarification on that one to see. But I, my from what I have heard in the past, that has not been an issue once we went to the bookmarks because it was the bookmarks that mattered instead of page numbers. And I'll be honest and say because I am not a writer. Um, I ignored page numbers from the word go and okay. just made sure that it was in order when I put it in there and I didn't worry about it and nobody said a thing. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe they said, ah, she's a flaky artist, she can't do it anyways, but nobody, everybody used the bookmarks because it stays as a digital document. They don't go looking for page 93, they go looking for, you know, your second letter, you know? So um, it 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 might we might be able to skip that altogether, but again, as always, we keep keep having to go back to our departments because there have been such distinctions between them. Okay. Um, thanks. So the next thing I want to talk about then is. Um, how we can edit, this is what Shaheen was just talking about, can you edit that um, list of bookmarks? So for example, um, it asks for letters of support inside of here. Um, and so if you have letters of support, I'm going to collapse my teaching. Um, if When you have letters of support, and it might be that you have multiple letters of support you want to add into here, it might be that you want to say, here's a letter of support from Chilton Reynolds. Here's a letter of support from Rhea Novak. Here's a letter of support you want to uh, have from uh, whoever. So if you want to add additional things into the list, you can to give more clarification. So the way that you do this is you go to the page where you want to add the bookmark. So I'm going to go down to a new page and then inside of the bookmarks tool, there's a little icon that, that's a little plus sign next to a bookmark. And I can click on that to say I want to add a new bookmark. I want this to be called um, a letter of support, uh, Rhea Nowak, or H-E-A. I don't know I'm having a hard time with your name today, Rhea. N-O-W-A-K, right? Welcome now, to my world. <laughs> um, 
what I would recommend doing let's um, is uh, what, making sure you're consistent with the lettering that's already there. So let's say I wanted to have this go under departmental personnel. I wanted to have multiple letters here. Um, once I have C, then the next thing I probably want to do is a lowercase Roman numeral. So I'm going to go back and actually right click on this one to rename it again so I can right click on it, rename, and then I can say lowercase one and add that in. OK, I hit enter on my keyboard to save that. And now again, just like everything else, I'm going to click off of it. I'm going to click somewhere else to see if it goes there. And then I'm going to click back on my letter of support from Maria to see if it jumps to that page and it does. Now, I know this isn't actually the letter of support from her, but we're going to pretend that this is a wonderful letter from Rhea that she wrote to me that's all sorts of flowing and great things about all the great things I've done. Okay. Um, so that's how we can do that. Now, one of the weird things in here, and I'm going to try and go as slow as possible because it's a really minute thing, is you want to keep your hierarchy this correct. So I want this letter of support to go underneath departmental chair. I want it to be a subset of that. So when I click on this and drag it, you'll see there's a little line at different places. Um, like right now it's below chair's letter. It's really hard to see, and I apologize on this one. Right now it's below chair's letter, and there's a little triangle at the left-hand side. And if I let go, you notice it's, it's in the same hierarchy as the chair's letter. If I want it to become a subset of that, if I click on this and drag it up just a little bit, there's my line again with the little triangle. And if I go up a little bit more, it, can you see how the little triangle moves in just a little bit? I don't know if you can see that or not, but it moves in just a little bit. And if I let go, now it becomes a subset of that. It, it, it is the one thing that's most frustrating to me in here because it's, it's really small visually. It's hard to see, and it's just a, a very minute movements that move it from being in line with it to being a subset of it. So just one thing to be aware of. Now, I, I want this to be actually, I'm gonna, I want to go underneath departmental chair. So I'm going to click down here and then I'm going to slowly drag up below it until it looks like it's, it's inside of it. And then I'm going to let go of it. And that shows as a subset of that one. Okay. So you can add in as many things here. If you don't want it to say optional summer statement, I can rename any of these. Like now that you have this, you can make it your own. Again, I would get feedback from your department to see if to make sure that the wording that you have here is consistent with what they want. Um, but this is all editable. So I can make as many additional bookmarks in here that I want to. Um, some people, when they come down to their teaching, Underneath um, student perception of instruction, they want to be able to say, here is my um, fall 2019 um, student evaluations. And they'll, they'll actually put a bookmark in that says that. And then here's my spring 2021 or 2020 ones. Here's my fall 2020. Here's my spring 2021. And you can actually make additional bookmarks underneath student perceptions of in instruction or course evaluations um, to be able to say those so you can quickly jump to those. The one thing I'll back up and say, and this kind of goes back to what Maddie was asking earlier. The other reason the bookmarks are nice is it also allows me to go back and check to make sure I have everything in here, right? So when I'm done, the last thing I do before I submit is actually click on all my bookmarks. I'm going to click on my um, current CV. Does that go to the right place? Ooh, I forgot to put my current CV in. I need to go back and get that. Especially as these get really long, it's re it gets really hard when you have 60, 100 pages inside of your document to be able to know if you have everything in there. So this list is really nice when you set the bookmarks because then we can um, I can go back through as my own mental checklist at the end to be able to say, do I have my personal statement? I'm going to click on the bookmark. It goes there. Great. That's ready to go. Do I have my current CV? I'm going to click on it. Yes, it goes right where I want it to go. Do I have my um, self-evaluation of my teaching? I'm going to click on that and actually have it go to where it needs to go. So it's a great checklist for you as well before you send it in. And Shaheen, that's exactly right. You can rename that so it doesn't say student perception of instruction. You can rename it, right click on it and rename it and call it course evaluation. All right, I'm going to take a deep breath, see if there's any questions or if Ria, you want to add anything in right now. Um, because I've only ever been a Mac user, I would always had to ask, but I don't have a right click. It's control click and you get the same response. And if that's um, obvious to you, you're way ahead of me. You're rocking it because that was like lost me for a year. <laughs> <laughs> 
other questions right now, because um, we're now talking about finishing up the dossier, the file, your life in a packet. We're getting ready to talk. <laughs> I always compare this to like when you move from one place to another place and you pack up everything into a moving truck. And it's really weird that all of your possessions are in a truck. It feels weird to me. It's the same thing with your dossier. I feel like you're packing up your whole career into this packet and then you're saying, here you go. Here it is. So. Any other questions on that process before we move forward? OK, so quick review. We started off with the template and our checklist. We started co collecting documents together that we needed and checking with our department to see what we needed. And we put all those documents into a OneDrive folder. Then we edited everything. We made sure it was correct and we were good to go um, and kind of take the time to go through and edit all of those and keep things in Word as long as possible. Then when we're confident, we combine everything into our PDF dossier file. Okay. Once we have things in there, then we need to set the bookmarks to get to them, both so you can look around, quickly jump to different places inside of your dossier, and to help your reviewers be able to jump around to where they need to look once they're there. Okay. When you've done all of that, as I said before, I like to review the whole thing. I go through each of my bookmarks. Does this go to my personal statement? Great. Does this go to my teaching statement? Great. Does this go to my um, grade distributions? Great. Does this go to wherever I'm, I'm expecting it to go to? Great. Ooh, I forgot to add in this document. I'm going to go back to organize pages. I'm going to add that in, and then I'm going to set my bookmark to go there. Okay. Once you have the PDF, then the very last step is that you submit this to workflow. This is your handing off of this. And it's, you have one step in here is just the handing off. It's the same. It's the equivalent of taking that big paper binder that we used to have to do and handing it to the secretary or whoever you went to, right? This is the thing where you say, this is finished. I'm going to hand this off for submission. Now, it might be, and we talked about this before, your department wants to see it first, so you might take that whole thing, hand it to the department, they um, hand it back to you and say, here's some suggestions, and then you can go back in and edit it and do some of the things we talked about before. Once you have it ready again, then um, from your department, it, inside of your department might have its own review, and then it might um, go back in. And Diana, did I say all that right before I go any further? Because I'm about to hand off to Diana on this, because that's the last step is, is Diana. Yeah, I believe you did, yeah. Okay, good. All right, so now we're getting ready to talk about, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen because uh, Diana might want to be able to share hers. Um, now we're talking about taking this and handing this in to the, um, promotion, uh, the promotion tenure committee or to the uh, Dean's Advisory Council or whatever that process is that you're going through, whoever you submit it to. And Diana... Uh, actually, before we do that, Rhea, is there anything else you want to add about the process before we talk about this last step? Um, sure. I think two things that I want to say is that remember you are writing succinctly for people outside your discipline. So you want to be uh, not use jargon that would be confusing to someone in a different discipline. Uh, you don't want to talk down to them either, and you want to be succinct because these get long fast and people read them. They are very thorough. And the other thing is, is that this seems like a pain, but I've got to tell you, I actually really appreciated the process once it was done because I ended up articulating things for myself that really helped clarify where I was in my career. So give yourself the time to do this and let yourself think through it because it, it is valuable for you too, if you let it be. So those are just two things to keep in mind. Thanks, Rhea. All right, so Diana. Okay. What is okay. the process now for taking this uh, virtual uh, document? Before we go there, then back to one other thing that you guys mentioned that I want to cover, and that is there are a few pieces of the dossier that you will get be getting out of digital measures. One of those things is your grade distribution. Um, they call it grade analysis, 
I don't know why we can change it that if we need to, but I must share my screen. And Windows. This. Okay. So when you log into DM, it takes you to this window. Now, before I do this, I'm going to caveat it with, we're, we're working on this. So, some of the things I show you at this minute are in there, but they will be next week. I swear to God. So, if you go under grab the report up on the top right corner, you get a list of the reports you can run. One of them is great analysis. You pick your semesters that you need to include, and then you pick the format. Now, you can do it as a Word doc. You can do it as a PDF. It really doesn't matter. Then when you hit run report, it will come up with where you want to save the document, put it in that exact same OneDrive folder that Chilton was talking about. Okay, so that's how you get that piece for your dossier. Does that make sense to people? Uh, Carmela wants to know if you include multiple semesters at the same time, you can do them all at once? Yes. There you go. They come up in one report, one, one file. Okay, so now when we do the tenure process, the process will start within the system. The system is called workflow. When the process starts, if you are on the list to apply for tenure, you will get an email that looks like this. This came from our test run a workflow, so there's some, you know, user info that's just generic, but it will look exactly like this. The open now button is a link. If you already have the DM digital measures, open in a browser window. It will take you directly to the form you need to use to submit your file. If you don't, it will take you to this activity page. My menu is a little different here because I am missed the whole thing. But where more is, you're going to see a workflow link. That will take you to um, something that will look mostly like this and you can click on the entry here and it will take you to the form. To make it easy for you, I would just log into DM before 
I click the link in the email, then you don't have to worry about finding it. So all you do here is you got to drag your file here, click on it. Oops, I can't do that because this is the production piece. But if you drag your file here, you can add comments to it if you wish. This apply button will actually say submit, um, submit to what's the first, um, submit candidate dossier. That's what it says. Um, and then you don't. That's all there is to it. You drag your file. Yeah, submit, that's it. So that part is really easy. So Alana has a question. Is that who I'm seeing? Yeah, uh, I was wondering if you have a sense of when that email will come out. The reason I ask is because having taken a clock stop, I've been left off the list um, the last two times and have basically only caught the error myself, so I just want to make sure that I know when I should be looking out for that. So, what's the date on the website? Do you have that open? Oh. I'm looking right now. Um, let's see. So, they are due August 31st. Yeah. Not so, yeah, it'll be right at the end of August. I'm sorry, what's due at the end of August? No, 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 I'm sorry. Sorry, that's not right. Sorry, I was looking through the wrong one. That's for next year's. The ones for this year that anybody's going up for renewal notification before December 15th, it says your candidate files are due to the department by September 10th is the first date that's showing on the website right now. So the email will come in probably a couple weeks before that. I would talk yeah. to your department yeah. secretary, so yeah. and and your the dean secretary because they're the the dean secretaries are the ones who send the links. Yeah. And I would be in touch with them to make sure that you're on the appropriate list, and then I would contact them like the polite squeaky wheel. Yeah, in it's August. It's the HR uh, link that has been the. The, the problem. Okay, I'll just keep emailing people. Yes, we yeah. will make sure the process starts itself at least three weeks before you need to actually submit it. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Shaheen. I think Madeline has a uh, hand raised okay. for me. Uh, my question was just. Uh, is this the same for adjuncts? <laughs> is it all? It's all the same. So we should get a letter too. Yeah, if you're on the list, you'll yep. be in the system, and everybody on that list will get a link. Okay. And again, we because workflow is new, and we're not. Not everybody's on the right list we're finding in digital measures. I would be in touch with department secretaries and dean secretaries and ask them, how do I make sure I'm on this list? And if it is, as Alana said, an HR thing, then we need to be in touch with HR. And this part of this is because so many folks are not in the habit of using workflow yet. Not everybody has knows where to upload appropriate names yet. And so you guys get to teach us all. <laughs> I will, this time anyway, I will be in contact with the people and say, okay, who's on your list? Those people go in there. But if you're not on the list, I don't know you're supposed to be on the list. 
So you guys have to make sure that part's taken care of. Yeah, sorry about that. We hopefully will streamline this so that you don't have to wonder if you're going to get what you need when you need it. Yeah. We, but it's a new system, so we're still figuring out how to make sure that information gets transferred in a timely way. And those folks who stop their clocks are probably in a similar situation. Shaheen was next, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, Diana, when you showed us in DM the grade distribution, which is called grade analysis, yeah. is that the same thing as the comparative course, course evaluations? So, whenever we get our course mm -hmm. evaluations, um, you know, the, we, we, have, we can, earlier we could email uh, course evals at Oneonta, and now, you know, we have to email the TLTC. There, there are two pieces to that. There's the course evaluations that you know that you get from from course evals, but then there's also the grade distributions that you usually get from IR. Yeah, so I'm I'm asking about the comparative course evaluations. That's a separate. Ah, uh, those come from me. Yes, those come from me. They, they, they come from me. Yeah, the they come from me. You have to when you compare. We compare. Well, that's tricky. I've been told not to do individual course comparisons because I does not have that data for older time frames. And we'll slowly be working out of that. But what I usually do for everybody is I compare your department you school and the college. So no specific course is actually included in that comparison. As of right now, that might change. Does that make sense? And just to clarify, that I have to get in touch with you for. I can't yeah. pull that from the end. No, put a ticket, put a service now, ticket in, and that will be sent right to you. Okay? Man, we got to get some more of this uh, workflow so that candidates aren't looking for their information in 14 different places. We've got to get this, yeah, I, streamlined. I talked DM about possibly getting those reports into the system. The only problem with doing that is there's no way to lock those off from your supervisors. So they can see anything we put in the end for you. And not all faculty want to share that stuff. So we're kind of stuck with that remaining separate for now. Got it. Um, I know DM does have their own evaluation software. I'm going to guess that that privacy issue is still going to be there even if we choose to switch products so we're going to start with that for now so uh mina said her hand right there mina yeah, I mean, uh, I was just curious about uh, the people who are going up for promotion. We are not on the list, obviously, right? So, I mean, uh, we should contact with our dean's secretary. Rhea, do you know the answer to that one? You I'm, should be on the appropriate list, but 
again, we're trying a new process, so I would put that in there and, and request that it's not just renewal and not just tenure, but tenure and promotion, because it does end up with a different committee. It doesn't go to the Dean's Advisory Council like a renewal. It goes to the Promotion and Tenure Committee. So it is important that you check that it's in the correct yes. list. You're right. It, I mean, I, I, I'm going up for uh, promotion to fall uh, this year. So uh, obviously I'm not on the list. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I should contact yeah. them. There are actually two different workflows that get run. There's one for PNT and one for renewal. So we need two separate lists. So if you are out of renewal, make sure they know you should be on the renewal list, not the PNT Okay, so I think that so for me, I would I would agree. Like, reach out to your dean secretary and say I'm planning on doing this. I just want to make sure I'm on the correct list for that. Okay, thank you. And let's see, Shaheen, um, if it's institutional research, that would uh, that did you see I'm her? Not, I'm just clarifying because I used yep. the link you sent and then. Because they're everything when you go to that, right? The service request. Yeah. So, specific. I, so let's see for course. For, I'm trying to think of what goes to IR for requests and what comes to us. And and actually, uh, let's pause for a second and just say we are we are over time. So thank you very much that those we want to say. Hope this is uh, good for you and that we are happy to have these conver continue these conversations. And I think hard, the hardest thing is we're seeing is like, where do I go to get all the different data I need to even put into this? So um, we can continue to have those conversations. And that might be some things that we continue to talk about is how do we say for this, you go here for this, you go here. That's kind of what we're getting into now. So that because there are about four or five or six different places you might need to go to to get all the different data you need for this. So um, Shaheen, we'll, we'll get some more clarification on that. Um, we can talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. Thank you. Know,